Carol Danvers, Earth-616 Carol Danvers is a human-slash-Kree hybrid and a military warrior, better known as the high-flying superhero Captain Marvel. With no support from her authoritarian father, a young Danvers joined the Air Force by herself as a promising cadet, quickly escalating to rank of major as an intelligence agent. Eventually, she was tasked to be a head of security at NASA when it was infiltrated by a Kree soldier named Captain Marvell. Accidentally subjected to the Psyche Magnetron machine, Danvers was imprinted with energy from Marvel's Kree Nika bands, being transformed on a genetic level and acquiring mighty abilities. Initially adopting the name Ms. Marvel, she established herself as a vigilante and joined the Avengers. As an Avenger, her very life has been extirpated from her control after she was attacked by the villain Marcus and the mutant terrorist Rogue, who permanently absorbed her powers, her memories, and even her personality. In a very lengthy process, Danvers recovered her abilities and forged a prominent superhero career on Earth and in outer space, having the X-Men, Starjammers, Avengers, and the Guardians of the Galaxy as her allies. Ultimately, Danvers has gone on to adopt the mantle of Captain Marvel for herself. As the chief leader of the Alpha Flight Space Program, Captain Marvel was the protagonist of the Second Superhuman Civil War, being put in direct conflict with her teammate and rival Tony Stark, the Invincible Iron Man. More recently, Danvers has learned about her true heritage as the daughter of a Kree super soldier named Marielle, and has been struggling to cope with her status as a woman from two worlds. Early Years Carol Danvers was born to Joe Danvers Sr., a former U.S. Navy officer and construction worker, and Marielle, a captain in the Kree Army. Marielle had been sent to Earth on a mission to assimilate with humans and give birth to a hybrid child but had decided to abandon her former life and cut contact with the Kree. Carol's name comes from Karel, which means champion in Kree. Carol was raised in a Beverly suburban community to the north of Boston, Massachusetts, completely unaware that she was not a normal human. She also lived with Stevie and Joe Jr., two sons Joe had had with his previous, late wife. Over the years, Carol's father became increasingly apprehensive for potential retaliation from the Cree for Marielle's desertion, causing him to drink and become abusive. In part due to her Cree heritage, Carol dreamed of becoming an astronaut and traveling to distant planets, as a teen she even hitchhiked to Cape Canaveral to view a launch there. Her father, however, could not accept women as men's equal, and when financial troubles meant he could only send one child to college, he chose Steve despite Carol's superior grades. He also dismissed her need for a college education and wanted her to find a good husband instead. Military Career When Carol turned 18 a few months later, she turned her back on her father and joined the Air Force, intending to be a pilot and to get a college degree via the military. Her brother Steve's death in military action would eventually draw Carol back to her family, but she still never felt truly accepted by her father. She quickly rose to the top of her Air Force class, taking the call sign Cheeseburger. However, Carol's flying career was ended when she was shot down over Afghanistan while piloting one of Tony Stark's experimental jets. She was captured by a man named Ghazi Rashid, who tortured her for several days. Despite a broken leg and serious injuries, she managed to escape and discovered that Rashid was in contact with a CIA agent codenamed Vitamin. She made it to a safe house in Mazari Sharif, where she was debriefed by USAF Colonel Michael Rossi. No longer cleared for flying due to her supposed amnesia, Carol was recruited by Rossi into Air Force Special Operations. Carol and Rossi had their first mission together in Berlin, it was on this mission she began calling him ace. They followed Vitamin's trail to a tower block, but the apartment was blown up by freelance agent named Rick Mason, who then escaped. Rossi went on to become Carol's teacher, friend, and then first love. Though they eventually drifted apart, Carol always remembered him fondly. Carol first met Logan, later Wolverine, in Washington, D.C., when she and Logan's old acquaintance Nick Fury rescued him from the combined attacks of Hydra, Sabretooth, and the Black Widow. Carol and Logan were reunited when Fury sent them with pilot Ben Grimm on a doomed reconnaissance mission over Russia, encountering the deadly spy Black Widow. By the time they clashed with Logan's longtime foe Sabretooth in Canada some years later, Carol and Logan were old friends. They served on several missions together, and seemingly also had a romantic relationship at some point. When Carol was imprisoned in the Lubyanka building in Moscow and, though the Air Force abandoned her, Wolverine and Rossi disobeyed orders to break her out of prison and smuggled her out of Russia. Soon afterwards, having served 10 years as a top field agent for Air Force intelligence, she was appointed security chief at Cape Canaveral on the request of NASA. Cape Canaveral As a NASA security officer in the Lunar Receiving Laboratory located in Houston, Carol was involved in Dr. Peter Corbeau's Cavert project. She would later be assigned to watchdog Dr. Cronton's Doomsday Man project in the Pacific Ocean. NASA eventually requested her to transfer for an open position as head of security which she accepted, resigning from the Air Force bumping her to full colonel at retirement. 
As head of security in Cape Canaveral, Danvers became embroiled in the schemes of the Cree Empire. Due to a Cree sentry number 459 being deactivated by the Fantastic Four and taken into custody by NASA, a secret Cree operation assigned the spy soldier Captain Marvell to get military revenge against humanity. Sabotaged by his superior coronel Jan Rog, Marvell crossed paths with a plane accident victim who worked at Cape Canaveral, the robotic expert Dr. Walter Lawson. Impersonating Dr. Lawson, Marvell gained access to the installations where the sentry was kept and that were also guarded by the suspicious Danvers. Jan Rog activated the sentry to destroy Marvell, forcing him to resist in his secret warrior alter ego Captain Marvel. This fight led Danvers to be intrigued by Marvell's two identities, the eccentric Lawson and the inspiring Captain Marvel. Ironically, Captain Marvel became a heroic figure in Cape Canaveral, consolidating the admiration Danvers came to have for him after he battled the Super Scroll and inspiring her to investigate her trusted hero. However, she was still uneasily unsure about Lawson's activities. When spotting Marvell returning to Earth's orbit from Yon Rog's Kree warship, Danvers strangely found him as Lawson instead. Though Marvell denied witnessing anything, Danvers had her suspicions were raised and became determined to prove him wrong. By insisting on her investigation in the landing site, Danvers became a target for Yon Rog, who tried to eliminate her. She was saved by Captain Marvel, who she attempted to convince to watch Dr. Lawson. As Captain Marvel, Marvell indeed investigated the life of the strange man whose identity he had usurped. A thankful Danvers met Captain Marvel with a kiss following a conversation with him about Lawson. Becoming closer to Captain Marvel and Lawson turned Danvers into a target. In the hotel room Marvell lived as Lawson, she was abducted by one of the real Lawson's assassin robotic creations, CyberX. Amidst a fight between Captain Marvel, CyberX and the Aiken, she was saved. Lawson's former employers in the organization then kidnapped Danvers while she accompanied Marvell, who was mistaken for Lawson. Captain Marvel helped Danvers escape one more time, by plotting against the captors alongside her. Captain Marvel soon had his reputation eroded after being forced to steal a moon rocket from the Cape in order to resist Yon Rog's constant attacks and to escape his former Kree brethren, which resulted in him getting arrest warrant placed upon him by the American government much to Danvers' disappointment. She correlated Captain Marvel's betrayal to Lawson's erratic behavior and gave the order to arrest Lawson as well. Marvel's double life was ruined after this. Eventually, he made his way back to Danvers and Cape Canaveral by helping her against the menace known as the Manslayer. Danvers still trusted Captain Marvel, but, despite his assistance, the surrounding military treated him as an enemy for the earlier treason charges. Their standoff was broken off prematurely by Iron Man, who had been controlled by the Puppet Master. Following the battle, Carol Danvers was hospitalized and Marvel was forced to leave the planet. Upon awakening in a hospital, an obsessed Danvers fled in order to look for Captain Marvel when FBI agents came to question her about Dr. Lawson. Just outside the hospital, a concussed Carol was kidnapped by Jan Rog, who wished for final revenge against Marvell. Jan Rog brought her to an abandoned subterranean Kree outpost that had a damaged Kree Psyche Magnetron, a machine able to synthesize pieces of Kree device technology. Empowered by the Nika bands, Marvell was lured into the secret base. During their battle, Danvers was brutally knocked by Jan Rog into the damaged machinery. As the outpost collapsed, Marvell chose to bring only Danvers to safety as Jan Rog perished. Unbeknownst to Carol Danvers, her genetic structure was altered by the incident by unlocking her latent Kree powers. Danvers' successful career at NASA was damaged because of the events from the months prior and she was reassigned to a secret Air Force facility in Indiana, near Chicago. As a result of a raid committed by the superhuman Nitro on the base to steal a nerve gas called Compound 13, Danvers found herself allied with Marvell once again. Nitro, who had been sent by the Lunatic Legion, was defeated, but Captain Marvel was exposed to the carcinogenic element. The Lunatic Legion then ordered the Living Laser to finish Marvell's partner Rick Jones at the hospital. Danvers helped to protect him alongside Ant-Man and the Wasp. Following the crisis, she administered an antidote to Captain Marvel to relieve him from the deadly effects of Compound 13. Demoted to a mere security guard, Danvers was transferred back to Cape Canaveral. There, she was attacked by an alien parasite who possessed Marvell's former lover, Medicuna. Fed by Una's jealousy against Danvers, the alien brutally attacked her. Captain Marvel put an end to its threat. Ms. Marvel. In view of her plummeting career, she resigned from NASA. Living off an accumulated salary, Carol wrote an angry tell-all expose on NASA, burning many bridges. The best-selling book briefly made Carol a celebrity, gaining her a reputation, and she began working as an editor for Woman Magazine, a publication owned by the Daily Bugle, and relocated to a penthouse on Park Avenue. 
As a consequence of the Psyche Magnetron's alterations, Carol developed a split personality to access her Kree powers, which included superhuman strength, flight, and a seventh sense that caused her to periodically receive premonitions. Carol would black out and turn into the amnesiac Kree warrior named Ms. Marvel, instantaneously donning a costume which the Psyche Magnetron had created for her to ease her body's changes. As Ms. Marvel, Carol became a superhero. Both of her identities remained unaware of each other's existence. Under the personality of Ms. Marvel, Carol saved her new boss Jay, Jonah Jameson, from the Scorpion. Jameson, however, didn't approve of superheroics and he ordered Carol to write an expose on her alter ego for the inaugural issue. Carol continued to experience these blackouts, but they did not stop her from pursuing her career as a writer and editor. In response to her condition, she sought the services of a psychiatrist named Michael Barnett. In a session, he used hypnosis to prod her mind and found out that the Psyche Magnetron had altered her. Immediately afterward, Carol fainted and changed into Ms. Marvel in front of him and left, and he was later unable to relay the discovery to Carol. After fighting the Destructor and his ex-employer AIM, Carol traveled back Cape Canaveral to visit her old friend Salia Petrie under the guise of writing a cover story for Woman magazine about female astronauts. By retracing her old memories in Florida, Ms. Marvel figured out that she was Carol Danvers, and vice versa. Back in New York, Carol visited Barnett. He hypothesized that Ms. Marvel's seventh sense was responsible for her headaches and loss of consciousness, and he suggested to remove her other persona. Carol refused, despite her own uncertainties, and despite the fact that she had become afraid of turning into Ms. Marvel now that she knew what happened with the blackouts. After being left in a pile of rubble following a fight with Gortok, Carol was abducted by AIM, who had previously observed Carol's exploits and became interested in copying her alien powers. Carol managed to resist M.O.D.O. case brainwashing and escaped, with the experience making her less afraid of her other persona. Around this time, she also encountered rookie superheroine Jewel. Following a confrontation with M.O.D.O. case ally Deathbird, Ms. Marvel found Carol's apartment was blown up by a burglar named Jeffrey Ballard that she had seen in a vision. She managed to save most of the building but not Carol's treasured possessions, except for a fireproof box containing invaluable documents. When she finished up her work, she tried to infiltrate AIM's headquarters in order to gain more intel on Deathbird, but she found herself in the middle of two warring AIM factions. In the turmoil of the internal conflict, MODOK and Deathbird tried to launch a rocket to take over NASA's Skylab, a NASA project that examined cavert crystals in Earth's orbit. Ms. Marvel stopped their takeoff, but they both managed to evade justice. A new costume and losing employment. In a collaboration with fellow superhero and fashion designer at the time, Janet Van Dyne, they created a new black-yellow costume using unstable molecules. On her day off, she traveled with haste to New Mexico after receiving an emergency visit concerning the disappearance of fellow reporter Sharon Cole, who was taken by the lizard people. During her investigation into a group of disappearances, Carol was ambushed, after a quick but intense fight and brief verbal exchange, she was zapped unconscious and taken to their underground city. Waking up in a prison cell, she found the rest of the missing people, including Cole. After killing their greatest warrior, all the prisoners were let go in exchange for their own existence being kept a secret. Returning home, she received a present that contained a baby iguana as a token of gratitude. Following her return at Woman Magazine, she was removed as editor by her boss and publisher J. Jonah Jameson. Over the course of her tenure, the duo would regularly clash regarding the content of the magazine, over-budgeting, and her frequent absences as a consequence of her burgeoning career as Ms. Marvel. Burke was appointed as her replacement. Carol came home to a surprise party, thrown by her old colleagues and friends. Among the guests was a disguised mystique waiting for her moment to strike. When she returned from a date with Sam Adams, she was visited by her not-quite-dead friend, Salia Petrie. Petrie, who was under the mental control of the Faceless One, transported them to the dry dock. With the aid of Vance Astro, they defeated him and Carol revealed her identity to a frightened Petrie. She established herself as one of New York's premier superheroes working with Spider-Man, Defenders and the Avengers. Joining the Avengers Ms. Marvel was invited to join the team during the Scarlet Witch's leave of absence. Carol was accepted as a temporary replacement, she was subjected to rigorous security procedures, who were recently implemented by the National Security Council, which included a retinal scan, voice recordings, and the team had now a size limit of seven. Following her initiation, she was shown to her own quarters in the Avengers mansion. She quickly established herself as a valuable member, as a member of the Avengers they prevented Absorbing Man from leaving the United States, rescued the Maximoff twins from an elder god, who had possessed Wanda during a family visit in Trancha defeated and buried a group of hostile elementals in a Russian nuclear reactor. 
Carol's stay with the Avengers was extended, thanks to Scarlet Witch prolonging her leave of absence. However, Jirich was fed up with the Avengers' obstinate behavior, and vowed to shut them down. He arranged a Senate hearing, arguing that the superhero team was a security threat and demanded their disbandment, but the hearing was derailed by the Grey Gargoyle. By defeating him, they reaffirmed the Senate's trust in the Avengers and considered their concern for public safety genuine, allowing their special privileges and security to remain intact. The team had extricated themselves from Jirich's total control. But before they could bring back former members back in the fold, they had to respond to an emergency in Pittsburgh at a local foundry, previously owned by Wonder Man, that Iron Man was interested in purchasing. Afterwards, Wonder Man was reinstated as an Avenger and the Falcon left the team, knowing that the government quota no longer existed and feeling out of place in the team. Becoming Binary Carol was at a farewell banquet with the X-Men on board the Shariar flagship, but all of a sudden Melandra went catatonic. Deathbird suddenly appeared taunting her and proclaimed herself to be the new Empress. She then detonated a bomb which rendered the X-Men unconscious, and her brood allies captured Carol and the X-Men to turn them into host forms. The brood subjected her to an evolutionary ray that triggered the latent potential of her augmented genes and revealed that she had a psychic resilience that surprised them. Nearby, Wolverine had freed himself, smelled Carol's scent, found the lab she was kept, and he freed her by smashing everything in sight. She was mostly in order, but she was surprised how energized she felt. After they reconvened with the rest of the X-Men and found Lalandra, they reached Sri Shar, Lalandra's yacht, and left. When they were eluding the brood, Carol became the cosmically powered mutate, called Binary. She used her newfound powers to restart the antimatter drive. She gained the power of a white hole and was able to generate heat, light, radiation, and access all other forms of energy along the electromagnetic spectrum on an almost solar scale. Shortly after, Colossus asked Carol to join the X-Men but she declined, knowing she could finally travel space and didn't want it to be confined on Earth. In a moment of respite, Wolverine finally told the rest of the team that the brood had implanted eggs in their nervous systems to transform them and use their genetic potential. His own healing factor barely saved his life. Carol, with a cry of rage, activated her binary powers and blasted off into space. Carol flew to a brood base on Madrizer, where she used her overwhelming power to enact revenge, she demolished their entire world except for the enslaved Akanti. Regrettably, the Akanti couldn't be saved and was put out of her misery. Following the destruction, she found Storm, who had bonded with an Akanti. When Carol and the X-Men reunited, the Akanti explained the history between them and the brood. Akanti sought help from the X-Men, if they relieved the racial soul of the old prophet singer body, who was on Slee's world, his successor would be able to bring his people to safety. Meanwhile, the X-Men gained access, in space, the enemy numbers began to take their toll, and Carol was overwhelmed and neutralized. Fortunately, moments later the Starjammer came to the rescue when it dropped out of hyperspace. Later, when Carol found the X-Men in a crystalline chamber wounded and about turned into brood, she used her solar affinity to distill the soul essence from the chamber and returned the Akanti young prophet singer and killing all the embryos. They were all teleported to Starjammer and Slee's world was left in ruins. However, Wolverine realized that the Queen claimed there was an embryo which imperiled Earth, and that could only be Charles Xavier. On Earth, they defeated the remaining brood and Charles's mind was put in a new body with the help of the Fantastic Four. Attributes Powers Nick Fury's intel classified Captain Marvel as power level 8. Enhanced physical abilities Superhuman strength, Carol is superhumanly strong, though her specific level of strength has varied over the years. She was previously listed at a level of roughly class 50, half her original strength as binary. However, since she is able to absorb and manipulate various types of energy, she can use this redirected energy to temporarily increase her physical strength to near binary levels, or class 100 plus. Currently, her strength level at its resting rate allows her to support well over 100 tons, as she was able to support the weight of dead celestial as one fell to earth. Superhuman Stamina, Carol's musculature produces considerably fewer fatigue toxins during physical activity than an ordinary human. As binary, she could physically exert herself at peak capacity for about 24 hours before fatigue began to impair her. She was reduced to roughly half this capacity after losing her binary powers. However, she is capable of channeling absorbed energy to further increase her stamina to higher levels. Superhuman durability, the tissues of her body are considerably harder and more resistant to physical injury than those of an ordinary human. She is capable of withstanding high-caliber bullets, great impact forces, falls from great heights, exposure to temperature and pressure extremes, and powerful energy blasts without sustaining any injury. While channeling the energy she has absorbed, her body's resilience is extended to an even greater degree. 
As binary, Carol managed to survive the explosion that destroyed the entire planet brood outpost. Superhuman agility, as binary, Carol's agility, balance, and bodily coordination were enhanced to levels significantly beyond the natural limits of the human body. Superhuman reflexes, as binary, Carol's reflexes were heightened to the point of being virtually instantaneous. Flight, Carol is capable of propelling herself through the air and the vacuum of space at tremendous speeds. Although her top speed is unknown, she flew at three times the speed of sound for several hours, so it is likely she can go much faster. Spaceflight, as binary, Carol was capable of surviving unaided in the vacuum of space for indefinite periods of time. After first losing her binary powers, Carol proved incapable of achieving orbit or surviving unaided in space. However, she was highly intoxicated when she attempted to do so, which may have hampered her progress. She has since proved capable of surviving and fighting in the vacuum of space, only requiring an air supply to do so. Flash precognition, aka cosmic awareness slash hypercosmic awareness as Ms. Marvel, Carol was subconsciously able to anticipate the moves of her opponents, though this power activated randomly, making it unreliable. After Rogue robbed her of her powers, she was subsequently transformed into binary. After her binary powers faded, it seems that Carol's seventh sense returned. Chala theorized that when the Kree Psyche Magnetron gave Carol her powers, she inherited some of Captain Marvel's abilities during exposure to it. In that sense, her travels across exospace and the like bolstered this aspect of her powers to see the cage outside of reality that's binding the Marvel Universe. Regeneration, Captain Marvel boasts a healing ability which she can consciously push to an extent, boasting a healing factor supplemented by absorbing energy. A facet of which was gifted unto her when part of the central nucleus of a techno-organic alien named Crew had physically merged with her. This facility also bolsters the potency of her metabolism, allowing her to quickly regenerate from catastrophic wounds such as nuclear detonation, genetic disruption even brood infection. Her newfound recovery abilities had the added bonus of restoring lost biophysical facilities, like her ability to shift between binary and Carol at will. Contaminant immunity, Carol's regenerative powers coupled with her human-slash-alien Cree physiology are so potent that she has a greater degree of immunity to toxins, diseases, and or poisons. Even being able to resist embryonic infection by the brood after a second attempt by one of their queens. Decelerated aging-slash-conventional immortality, Dr. McCoy brought up how these new healing abilities put those of Wolverine to shame. Stating that her regenerative powers would keep Ms. Danvers in her prime forever. Healing, like her accelerated healing factor, Carol is able to rapidly heal others by focusing different forms of energy into their body, thereby greatly boosting their healing processes. Energy manipulation, much like her namesake predecessor, Captain Marvel can control, absorb, and manipulate various types of energy to be discharged however she sees fit. Over the years, Carol has become an expert at modulating the various aspects of repurposed energy at her disposal, even learning some new tricks from her alt. Counterparts during her life as a superheroine. Energy absorption, her body is capable of absorbing various types of energy for the purpose of temporarily enhancing her own physical attributes. She can augment her strength and energy projection up to the force of an exploding nuclear weapon. If empowered by enough energy, she can assume her binary form again temporarily. Photonic blasts, Carol can fire powerful concussion blasts of photon and stellar light energy from her hands and fingertips. As with a doppelganger of hers, Ms. Marvel can potentially discharge her energy from the eyes as well. Something which she has done, but possesses little control being unable to see out through her optics when doing so. Energy Soul, in order to escape a tailor-made prison constructed by Box Supreme, Carol needed to think outside the box and apply her abilities in a new way she never had before. Ergokinetic Phasing, Captain Marvel's spirit projection can easily ghost through most any form of binding and incarceration standing against it. Useful for helping herself when it comes to escaping traps guarded against her powers. Matter Manipulation and Transmutation, by channeling the absorbed energy, Carol is able to manipulate and alter matter and energy on a molecular level. She can use absorbed energy to transform her regular clothing into her costume and vice versa. This is an ability she once possessed as Ms. Marvel. Carol did not demonstrate the ability as binary, it only resurfaced after her powers were reduced and she began going by Warbird. This allows her to create and absorb matter and energy, shape, and rebuild it into anything of her choosing. Energy Construct Creation, as Captain Marvel, Carol has used her energy powers in more creative ways, she was able to create an energy barrier around a blast cannon which choked up the works until its internal structure violently ruptured from the inside out. She can potentially shape her stored energy into more practical shapes, like razor blades of pure energy, to slice and sear with. 
Self-sustenance, Captain Marvel proved time and again she can survive without having to eat, sleep, breath or rest by thriving the ambient energies within her surroundings. Capable of thriving perfectly within the cold recesses of deep space with little to no discomfort at all. She's also apparently capable of breathing underwater, despite previously being shown to need scuba gear. Binary Powers As binary, Carol was once linked to the power of a white hole and was able to generate heat, light, radiation and access all other forms of energy along the electromagnetic spectrum on an almost solar scale. She also had minor control over gravity. She could breathe in space and travel at the speed of light. She is able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe against Fire Lord. The link was believed to be severed, therefore she could no longer do so on the level she once had. However, Carol proved she still retained the capacity for this power, as she still remains the ability to connect with white holes at will within her. Abilities Experienced spy, Carol is an experienced spy, having worked various undercover operations for Air Force intelligence. Multilingual, Carol is fluent in English, Russian, and Arabic, as well as Cree, and both common and imperial Shariar. She speaks passable Rajaki and has a limited vocabulary in several other languages, including Chinese. Master Pilot, Carol is an accomplished pilot, having extensive experience with USAF planes as well as with Cree, Shariar, and other alien starships. Master Combatant, she is extensively trained in armed and unarmed combat through military combatives. Talented Journalist, Carol is a talented journalist excelling as a freelance writer and magazine editor owing to her time as an intelligence agent. Accomplished author, Carol has published several books. Scientific knowledge, having been given memories equivalent to a Cree captain by the Psyche Magnetron, Carol has extensive knowledge of the technologically advanced vehicles and devices of the Cree Empire similar to Marvel. This allowed her to do things like invent a serum that transformed her into a water breather to pursue Tiger Shark. She also has an understanding of aerodynamics from her pilot training and education and was able to strategize downing Robin Hood using the Square Cube Law. Paraphernalia Equipment Captain Marvel's suit, around the same time Carol Danvers decided to take over Marvel's codename, she was wearing a full-bodied suit, a variant of Marvel's specialized Cree suit, while retaining the sash which she wore as Ms. Marvel, which was made out of Stark-designed impermeable fabric. The costume also had a collapsible helmet that, when used, had Carol's hair coming out as a mohawk. Transportation Avengers Quinjet If you like this content, don't forget to like and subscribe. See you later, bye bye.